If we look at the Steam hardware survey numbers to get an idea of GPU market share, we can see that Nvidia has about 75% of the PC gaming market compared to AMD's 15%. While not totally accurate, the Steam hardware survey is a very close representation of the gaming market due to the sheer amount of users of the Steam platform. If we think 75% is a massive lead for Nvidia, when we look at only the GPUs that came out in the last 5 years or so, Nvidia's dominance jumps to 93%. And yes, this includes AMD's mid-range cars like the RX 470 and 480 and the refreshes 570 and 580, etc. How did Nvidia go from a market share of 50% in 2010 to 75% in 2018 and growing, especially when AMD has very compelling cards like the RX 580 which outperforms the competing GTX 1060 in most games while being about $20 to $40 cheaper. In the gaming market segment where most cars are sold, the mid-range, AMD has the better value and competing performance but are being completely crushed by Nvidia. So what is Nvidia doing that is making their products sell more and by such a large margin? Well, Nvidia's growing dominance in the PC gaming market over the last 10 years, which as you'll see will likely continue in the future, comes from the mind of one man. And no, it's not Jensen Huang, it's this guy. Edward Bernays. You might not have heard of him, but you've probably heard of his uncle, Sigmund Freud. Edward Bernays was the first person to take Freud's ideas about the unconscious mind and implement them in the business world to manipulate the masses. He helped American corporations sell products that people didn't need by manipulating their unconscious desires. After his time managing the US propaganda for World War I in Europe, Bernays realized that he could use the same propaganda that elevated Woodrow Wilson, the then US president, to the status of hero of democracy during the time of war and apply it during peacetime in the world of business. According to Bernays himself, because the word propaganda later gained a bad connotation with Nazi Germany, he decided to come up with a new term to describe the massive unconscious manipulation of the masses. The term? Public relations. We will see how Nvidia uses the same PR tactics today, but for now, and in case you think you are immune to PR, let's consider some of Bernays' accomplishments. Using the ideas in Freud's book, General Introduction to Psychoanalysis, Bernays came up with tools, strategies and marketing events not just to influence individuals, but groups and their buying decisions. You see, Bernays realized that presenting consumers with facts was not how you got sales, because facts belong to the realm of the conscious. And to really manipulate the minds of the masses, he needed to get into their unconscious desires. For instance, in the early 20th century, there was a taboo against women who smoked. So very few women smoked. That is half of the market for potential cigarette buyers, after all. So using his knowledge of psychoanalysis, Bernays hired a group of young, rich women to light up cigarettes during the Easter parade, where thousands of people and press would be attending. He then told the press that he had heard that these women were lighting up and smoking the cigarettes as a form of protest against the discrimination of women and their rights to vote, calling the cigarettes torches of freedom. The next day, the most influential newspapers throughout America had a story on their front pages. The effect that this had on the masses was that if you agreed with women's rights to vote, then you agreed with their protest, and if you were a woman, you would be declaring your support for women's rights by lighting a torch of freedom yourself, in other words, by smoking. As a consequence, the sales of cigarettes to women began to rise. Now pay close attention to this, there were no facts involved in capturing the female market for smokers, there were no flashy adverts either. What happened was pure subversion and hidden manipulation of the target group using the press to convey the message. The idea that smoking makes a woman more powerful and independent persists till this day. It's completely irrational when you think about it, but it makes women feel more independent. It created an emotional connection with the idea of smoking. Can you think of groups of consumers today who have emotional attachments to corporations and products and who will defend them in completely irrational ways despite what facts might say about these products? <laughs> so how does this relate to Nvidia? 
The underlying idea behind Bonnet's propaganda tactics is that a mere object can become a powerful symbol of how you want to be seen by others. Just like owning an iPhone will make people feel like they have some sort of status in their group of friends, today having an NVIDIA graphics card, even a mid-range or entry-level one, grants you a special status both with your friends and with anonymous people with whom you share your setup with, for instance on the PC Master Race subreddit or Instagram, who then comment about how sweet your setup is. If your unconscious mind is convinced that NVIDIA represents speed, and that's the role of high-end GPUs, then showing your friends your PC with, say, a GTX 1050 Ti inside it will grant you a certain status, because NVIDIA is the company that makes the 2080 Ti the fastest graphics card that exists. The masses associate NVIDIA with high-end performance and quality, and we'll see why in a moment. So facts, like performance numbers or value, are completely irrelevant to them. It doesn't matter that the RX 580 is a better buy than the GTX 1060. What matters is that shiny green GTX GeForce logo glowing through the side panels of their systems. It's not by accident that PC case design has evolved to show the components inside, first with acrylic cutouts and now with full side panels made of tempered glass. Now, if you own an NVIDIA graphics card and are getting triggered by what I'm saying, just bear with me for a bit longer as you might discover some pretty interesting things about yourself. Bernays was the first to realize that you can make consumers feel emotionally engaged with companies and products. The successful cigarette campaign was only the start of decades of tremendous influence by Bernays, not just with corporations, but with politics also. He was the first to place products in Hollywood movies, just like today you will see NVIDIA products in the background of TV shows like Silicon Valley. Bernays was the first to have celebrities wear products like jewelry and clothes that he wanted to promote and sell, just like you will see today's YouTubers have their PCs in the backgrounds of their videos with SLI NVIDIA cards proudly glowing green. Bernays was also the first to commission studies from psychologists that claim a certain product was good for you and pass those studies as independent. Just like the Tom's Hardware's piece that advises users to just buy the RTX cards before there were even reviews of it out. As opposed to Nvidia's Bernays tactics, AMD's greatest mistake when it comes to PR is that they are still selling their products exclusively in functional terms. AMD, through their marketing campaigns and through their CEO, typically show consumers their products' practical virtues. When the Polaris cars were announced, Roger Kadori said that it would make VR affordable and that it was 27% more efficient than the previous generation. He then showed how two RX 480s in Crossfire would beat a GTX 1080 in Ashes of the Singularity and went on to talk about other practical aspects of the Polaris lineup. When you compare that to Jensen's announcement of the RTX cards, he talked about the future of gaming. A lot of people were confused as to why there were no benchmark numbers in the RTX announcement. That's because when it comes to positioning your products to the masses, facts are irrelevant. The RTX cards are not a massive jump in performance anyway, so why waste time with facts when you can instead create an emotional attachment to your brand? But how exactly does Nvidia do this? Let me give you a simple example, something that you've probably never even noticed. The name GeForce. Nvidia ran a contest back in 1999 where it asked the public to name the successor of the Riva TNT2. Out of thousands of entries, they chose the name GeForce and have stuck with it since. They might change GTX to RTX, but I can guarantee you they will always use the name GeForce in their mainstream cards. Why GeForce? You'd rightly say that it's the perfect name for a line of graphics cards because it's associated with acceleration and speed. But what's less obvious is the effect that this name has on the unconscious desires as discovered by Freud. GeForce is not just associated with speed, your unconscious associates it with destruction. You've probably seen the effects of GeForce being dramatically portrayed in movies and series, including recently in the sci-fi show The Expanse, where humans have to inject themselves with a special cocktail in order to endure the massive G-forces caused by high-speed space travel. 
As Freud discovered, one of the great unconscious desires in humans is a desire for destruction. Without consciously thinking about it, your brain will associate the G-Force brand as something that destroys things, including the competition. It will crush benchmarks. With a G-Force card, you will destroy your enemies in games. Without you ever realizing it, your unconscious mind even sees AMD struggling to bear the stresses and strains of G-Force. What about when you think of the name Radeon? Radeon is a derivative word of radon, which is a term for describing the radioactive decay of radium, which is the second leading cause of lung cancer. Definitely not the sort of association you would want for your brand. Now I know what you are thinking. This all sounds like complete tinfoil BS and these unconscious associations with the GeForce and Radeon brands would never affect you. Oh, but they do. In the realm of the conscience, you are in control and you are the one who associates meaning to words, but not in the realm of the unconscious. You have no control over that. There's a book that I highly recommend you read that explains this better than I could ever try to do in a short video that's called You Are Not So Smart by David McCraney, which has tons of documented research that show how the unconscious mind can be manipulated. Read it, it will transform the way you think, especially in regards to your purchase decisions. If you think that only the normies are influenced by this type of subversion, let me show you how tech enthusiasts also fall for the same schemes. Take a look at this comment from my previous video. You hate Nvidia so much it f***ing poisons your videos. And take a look at this one in the same video. Quit shilling Nvidia already, it makes you look bad. One claims that I'm shilling for NVIDIA and the other that I hate NVIDIA. Neither of those things are true, of course. Between my job and building this channel, I have exactly zero time to hate or love companies. I don't even have time to hate the haters. I couldn't care less if NVIDIA or AMD are in a dominant position in the market precisely because I'm well aware of how propaganda works. Remember this, once you are conscious of propaganda, it no longer affects you. I see these companies as selling me tools and I buy tools based on my needs. I don't buy hardware based on desire and I don't let myself become emotionally attached to either Nvidia or Intel or AMD. That's why in my videos I can point to these companies' faults as well as their virtues, which is what happened in the last video. These two comments show precisely what happens in the unconscious mind. Just as it's ridiculous for a person to think they are more independent because they smoke, it's ridiculous to emotionally attach yourself to a company that makes graphics cards, a tool, an object that serves the sole purpose of showing pixels on your monitor. So what other things have Nvidia done in their propaganda efforts? This is Ninja's stream cam, and what's that in the background there? You can see his PC, the very PC he uses to be successful at Fortnite, the most popular game on the planet right now. And glowing through the side window of his PC is an EVGA 1080 Ti. Ninja is the most popular streamer on Twitch, and his audience are mostly children, so what do kids ask their parents when they want to buy a computer? They want a PC like the one Ninja has. When they show their friends their new computer, they can say it's the same that Ninja uses. For them, it builds status, and status leads to emotional attachment to the product that gave them that status. For Nvidia, this results in a growing mindshare, because as we saw earlier, if you own an Nvidia graphics card, you unconsciously search for confirmation that you made the right decision when you bought that product, and you will find yourself pressuring others to buy the same brand that you did, and bullying those who chose the competition. Nvidia have been remarkably good at exploiting this, which is why they get away with pretty much anything, including practices that hurt consumers. Nvidia is planting the seeds for the YouTube and Twitch generations to become attached to their brand. Another strategy that targeted a slightly older audience was the New Dawn demo, which features a scantily dressed fairy. Using the female body to promote products was also an invention of Bernays, which he originally pitched to the automotive industry in the 1920s and remained in use for many decades later. This process of propaganda can be summarized like this. 1. You stimulate people's specific inner desires. 
and two, you convince people that your products will satisfy those desires. I cannot stress this enough, when it comes to capturing the masses, it's not facts that sell, it's manipulating the unconscious instinctual drives that lurk deep inside each of us. And if you have clever people like Jensen at the helm, you can also make it work with enthusiasts as long as they're not conscious that they are being manipulated. AMD will be announcing their answers to the RTX lineup pretty soon and they need to completely change their PR strategy. There's a saying that you might be familiar with, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If AMD wants to be a leader in consumer graphics, they need to employ the same Bernays tactics that Nvidia have been using for years. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't subscribe to Bernays tactics, I think he was an unscrupulous man. But this is the world of business, and if AMD doesn't radically change their strategy, Nvidia will continue to crush them, and it will only get harder and harder for their grip on the masses to be broken. If you like this type of content, you can help this channel continue to exist with just one dollar per month by joining my Patreon. If it's not possible for you to help financially, then please consider sharing this video on social media as that really helps. Thanks for watching and until the next one.